Man, got it around. OT7 back here. And today, like each and every day, I'm fortunate to take another breath and be on this plane of existence we call reality here on the planet Earth. I'm gonna share with you guys some tales of victory and glory. Some from my own life, from some from experiences I've seen, some from experiences that I've witnessed from other people. So you can have the victory of understanding. Be careful who you follow and listen to. And the glory when you understand. Other people come into your life, man. Some for a reason, some for a season, some for a short time. But each person that comes into your life, man, there's life lessons to be learned. And here's the number one life lesson you want to learn, whether you're young, old, middle-aged, decrepit, or just a lost motherfucker, man. When people are giving you information and knowledge, take it with a grain of salt, man, no matter who it is. I don't care if it's the President of the United States, when somebody tells you something or infers something to you or tries to give you a life lesson, you have to sit back and do three things. Number one, you have to say, who is this person and why should I listen to them? Number two, you want to say, how can this information help me on my path and my journey? And number three, and once you find out that you research this person, you like what they're talking about, you want to say, how can I make this information my own? Because part of, part of Stoicism is not just listening to quotes from Marcus Aurelius and the other great Stoics. It's to take those terms and principles and philosophies and to apply them to your life, dude, to make you the best version of yourself as you define it. Because at the end of the day, you want to become your own leader, the own captain of your ship, and the own director of your own movie, dude. That's what this that's what my channel is all about, man. Helping you find out who you are. Cause a lot of a lot of young cats are lost, man. I was lost, dude, so I understand. Now that I found myself, I want to try to help others to find themselves and to unplug from the matrix. So without further ado, I want to get into the topic of today's video, guys, which is in maximum security prison. Don't join a gang if you plan to go home after doing your fucking time. This is very important. I want to lead into this. I want to do a preface into this. I appreciate you guys watching my videos because there's a lot of other guys you could be watching, a lot of other information you could be taking in. And one thing you want you to understand, your time is your most precious commodity. Why? Once you spend it, you can't get it back. So I'm hoping that the time you spend with me will cause you guys to open up your consciousness, man, and, and to change your paradigm so you can be open to understand. What people tell you aren't always the truth. And I want to share with you, how do you know I'm telling you the truth? Because a lot of you guys come on here and li listen to me, guys. I'm 62, bro. I'm very happy to be alive. I feel I'm living my best life now. After the learning the life lessons I've experienced in the belly of the beast, the demonic darkness. Why? Because I want to share this with you young guys and you square guys. Unless you've been to the bottom of the pit of darkness and hell. You can't appreciate light, dude. And I'm going to tell you how I know this. You ever see like a rich kid? He was born rich, dude. And he's never fucking happy, dude. He has a lack of appreciation. A lot of American kids are rich when you compare them to, let's say, the Southeast Asia, this part of the world, maybe parts of Africa, maybe parts of South America, where there's true impoverishment. A lot of American kids are entitled. Why? Because they have never experienced a lack of a lack of anything. They never experienced having a lack of just the bare necessity. So they're just entitled, dude. And that's the problem I want to share with you guys. Me going to the belly of the beast, even though it was traumatic and horrendous. I personally, and I'm being transparent, I think this was the best thing that could have happened to me because I was on the path of darkness and destruction. I believed in the urbanization of America. The light has been told to minorities and black and brown and and yellow and red people heck even white dudes are buying into the garbage that the media is portraying that it's cool to be an urbanized thug dude to be a pookie in a ray ray you know what i'm saying and uh i bought into that narrative even though i was living a square life i was what was called a techie thug guys like yeah i was in the military and i did my i did my military stuff and i did martial arts and i worked out and I was a bouncer and I was in college and all that stuff I talked to you guys about. But being I was born and bred in the hood, it was imprinted on me, dude. 
and I had to go through a deprogramming process and how did I do that? I went to the darkest place I could ever go called Hell or Hades or Sheol Prison. Maximum Security Prison is the belly of the beast, dude. I felt like Jonah being swallowed up by a well. And I prayed to Almighty God, the Father, the Holy Spirit, whatever you want to call it. I said, if you let me up out of here, I promise to change my life. I promise that. And that's what this video is about, guys, because there's a lot of my value subscribers. Some of you guys watch my channel, but you're not subscribers. Why? YouTube puts an emblem by your name if you're a subscriber. It tells for how long you've been subscribed. And a lot of cats, I would say, man, 40% of you cats watching my videos aren't subscribed. I'm not going to beg you to subscribe because, hey, if you don't like the Kool-Aid, don't drink it. I can understand that, baby. I can appreciate it. But what I want to say this is to you. I see a lot of you guys who aren't subscribed to my channel talking about, oh, this YouTuber said this, OG, that you lying. This YouTuber said, oh, that might have happened in the 90s. It don't happen now because the gangs don't play that. And this other YouTuber says this and says that, that you're just fabricating stuff. But let me put it to you like this, guys. I'm going to be transparent here. Yes, maybe in the past, a few years ago, I embellished some stories, dude. I even lied about my military history as far as what my job, my MOS, my military occupational specialty was. And I'm not trying to make excuses or get pity from you guys, you know, because I paid the price. I almost went to federal prison for 10 years because you can't do that. But here's how you know I'm a good dude, man. When the powers that be contacted me because, and I'm not trying to be racist because I'm a, I'm a mixed dude, but it was three white dudes and a half white dude who turned me in and neither, none of them had been done military. I have been in the military. I have been in combat. I just embellished some stories about what my MOS was. So they turned me in because it's, there's hate. There's, there's hate crime, dude. There's racism. There's hate. And so what happened when the powers that be contacted me and they says, hey, we pulled your DD-214, which is your military record. We see you are a combat veteran, but you can't be on YouTube saying you were this MOS when you weren't. You can face 10 years in uh, federal prison because uh, I forget what the crime, what the, what the crime is called, but because they saw I did, I did go to combat and I was in the military. I did serve honorably before I went to prison. They gave me, a, they gave me an ultimatum. They said, okay. If you will make a video, man, uh, disclaiming your, your claim to be special forces, then we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll drop further investigation and charges. Why? Because I am a soldier. I did serve honorably. But here's what I want to share with you. I paid the price for that, guys, because I lost a lot of good friends that I was in the military with. A lot, a lot, I lost a lot of followers. Maybe some gang members who were believing in my super soldier stories and because then they wanted to join the military and become like me because they like my example. But let me share this with you in true transparency, guys. The main thing was I was trying to paint a caricature, not a character, a caricature, which would make young boys not want to be in gangs so that they can be leaving themselves and they can become an army of one. But now when I look back on it, dude, and I paid the price, dude, like I lost a lot of relationships, dude. I almost went to prison, like I said, federal prison. And they gave me a chance to recoup myself. I told myself then and then that I would, then and there, I would never, ever, ever, ever lie to you guys or anyone else. Why is this, guys? Because I made a point to say to myself, I never lied to myself again. Because let me tell you something, when you lie to somebody else, you're lying to yourself. And there's a phrase I live by. To thine own self be true, so you shall not ever lie to any man because you don't want to lie to yourself. So yeah, my shit is public record and it's public history, dude, and I can't change that. But I want to tell you like this, guys. I don't, I'm never going to come on here and tell you a lie, embellish a story about prison, the streets, my personal life, my lifestyle, again, because I'm so blessed I wasn't incarcerated. I'm so happy with my current living situation that I'm going to be brutally honest with you so you guys can get illuminated and see the light. So when these other prisoner channels are on here telling you that I'm lying and embellishing and making up stories and 
the blacks don't roll like this and the brothers don't roll like that and the woods don't roll like this and the Mexicans don't put up with that and the Asians ain't rolling like that and that shit's outdated. Let me put it to you like this. Look at the source. I'm the only, I think I'm the only, I don't know for sure, I'm guesstimating. I'm the only prison genre YouTuber who's a square dude. I'm not a gang member dude. I'm not a shot caller. I'm not in a mafia dude. I'm not in any, any crime organizations. I'm not part of a set or a hood. I'm a back east dude that got caught up, man. In California, when I got stationed out here in the military, I got caught up in the, in, the, in the lifestyle, dude. And I did some things I'm not proud of. And I did 10 years in maximum security prison. Actually, I did 10 years total. I did eight years in maximum security prison, two years, one year in medium and one in minimum. I was never allowed outside of the, I was never allowed outside in the honor rest because I have heinous crimes, dude, heinous. I was a savage and I'm not proud of it. But because of my savagery, my barbarism, I can now be a peaceful dude because there's a phrase I want to share with you before I get into the topic of today's video. It's better to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. So I'm saying to you guys, I don't have time to come on here, embellish, lie, tell stories, fabricate shit about maximum security prison because I'm trying to give back to the universe so that when I go to the other side, whatever that may be, I won't have harsh punishments awaiting me because of the travesties I've done in my past when I was a youngster and I was believing in the urbanization, that urbanization shit, man, the ghettification of fucking America. I believed in that life of violence and street violence, man. So how can I, how can I pay my karmic debt if I continue to lie? So I'm sharing with you. Look at the source. And I'm not going to say any names, but there's like five or six prison genre dudes that are telling you guys, oh, OG Selbeck's making that up and it don't, we don't roll like that and maybe that was the 90s. No. Look at the source. All these guys are former gang members or maybe they're current gang members. Here, here's how I know. When I first uh, got hooked up with Big Hurt, man, you know, he made some introductions to people, to me, who I thought had were former gang members and they were formed and now they were playing the square role, like working and they have families and all that. But here's what I found, and I'm not trying to have a smoke with anybody. I'm telling you my truth. Once a gang member, always a gang member, dude. That's just how California rolls. I can't speak about back east. I haven't lived there in over 20 something years. Yeah, they had gangs back east, but it was different. It wasn't like Crips and Bloods and Serene. It was more like blocks and hoods and, and drug gangs and stuff, gangs of jackers. It wasn't there. They wasn't representing the color. For what I understand now, they got Crips and Bloods back east, but that's not what this video is about. I'm just telling you, I can only speak about what I've experienced. And all the gang members that I met on the street, whether I was on their channel or uh, they came to me or I ran into them in the gym because in California, a lot of gang dudes go to the gym when I was fighting in the uh, MMA. A lot of gang dudes fighting in MMA because they're violent. When they say they're a former gang member, they're still a gang member. What they mean is they're not an active gang member, meaning like they're not putting their work in the streets like shooting people, but they still affiliated. So I'm just saying, look at the source. Of course, a guy who's a gang member or a former gang member or an affiliated dude is going to say there's no homosexual activity. Why? Because ergo I, if there's a guy who you look up to and he's a gang member or a shot caller or whatever, and he's telling you they're practicing open butt sex in the California penal system, you as a youngster, you know, you're looking up to gang members because you want money, power, and status, and women, right? Women. You don't want men butt. So if somebody you look up to your older homie or somebody that's got power and inf influence in the hood, a hood legend comes out and blank you tells you, man, yeah, when I'm in the pen homes, I practice, you know, man love, man. I give and receive because that's how we roll, homie. That's what makes our gang strong, homes. Hey, Vato, that's what makes our familia strong because we love each other's culos. If they were to tell you that, man, the gang numbers would drop on the street because youngsters on the street ain't down with that homosexual stuff, man. Most youngsters ain't down with that, man. Most youngsters, that's why they got so many red pill channels. They're chasing, they're chasing women and hyenas 
and girls with fat butts never trust a big butt and a smile. Youngsters got hard boners. They want to go up in some soft, wet, viscous innards, man. So if you if you're the shot caller or the big homie, tell them, yeah, when we go to the Penta homes, this is how we get down. I guarantee you the numbers will drop. And that's why these guys come on their channels talking about, oh, OG Subback's lying and he's making it up and he's fabricating. Okay, I'm telling you like this. I don't have the time, patience, or the aptitude to lie anymore or fabricate or make up stuff. I'm living my best life, baby. And when you're finally on your path, you don't have to make up stories and fabricate and all that. So with that being said, you guys coming on here with your comments talking about, oh, this 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 uh, prison channel said this OG and they don't roll like that. This other guy disputes what you're saying. Hey man, then maybe this is not the channel for you because you're not ready. You're not ready to find out the truth about life, dude. The truth is what it is about maximum security prison. I'm not talking about level one, level two, level three band camp. I'm talking about maximum security prison where guys that go in, most of them ain't coming out because their their time is so high, their crime is so heinous. That's why they got them in maximum security prison. There's different tiers of prison for a reason. Level one is mostly like homeless dudes and dudes that still in Snickers bars and bubble gum and stuff like that, dude. Maybe they played hooky from school. That kind of stuff. Level two is for a guy who goes into the, the supermarket and makes a bologna sandwich and runs out without paying or he's snatching old women's purses, dude. Or stuff. Maybe he's got a drug habit like that, dude. Level three is for carjackers, dude, and, and guys who maybe robbed the bank, but they didn't kill anybody, dude. They robbed a liquor store, you know what I'm saying? Or maybe they did great bodily injury to somebody in a fight. But they ain't got no 187s on their jacket, dude. Level four. Hey, welcome to the university, baby. That's that's for the big dogs, the big pup, the big dogs, man. The big boys, big homie. So anyway, let me get into the topic of this video. This is a precursor. I want to tell you this. This is very important. I'm going to tell you this in five minutes or under five minutes. That's why I had to give you this long introduction. Here's the number one reason in maximum security prison you don't join a king if you plan to go home after doing your time. First of all, man, let me tell you the number one reason not to join. There's three reasons. Number one is this. If you weren't a gang member on the street and you joined the gang, you're going to be the errand boy. You're going to be the torpedo doing all the missions to prove your loyalty. And you're going to have to pay rent. Yeah, you're still going to have to pay rent whether you give them your your prison food, like they're just going to be taking stuff off your tray, but that's the price you pay to join the gang because you saw or maybe when you go to canteen, you got to be breaking them off. Like, you know, in your mind, you rationalize like, yeah, I'm spreading with my homies. But in the actuality, if you ever want to tell them no, you see just how much of a homie they're not. Number two is this, dude. They're going to be going up in your butt cheeks, bro, because you're the new guy. You're the new booty. You don't have enough cojones to stand on your own. Your ball sack doesn't hang low enough. We'd be like, nah, I'm just going to ride by myself. You know, whatever the consequences are, we'll deal with that. No, that's that's it. And then here's number three, which I think should have been number one, but number three because it's the worst of all. They're going to have you committed to a life of crime, dude, because this is what I want to share with you in California. I can't speak about other places. In California, prisons, maximum security prison, the gang members run the prison and the streets. That's right. Listen to me. Let me say this to you again. The prison gangs run the crime and organizations on the street. And you might say to yourself, how is that possible, OG? Here's how it's possible. Because the shot callers and the gang leaders, they know. If you live a life of crime, listen to me, youngster. If you live a life of crime, there's only three things that's going to happen to you. One, you're going to get smoked on the street. Two, you're going to end up in prison. Or three, you're going to end up working for the police. You're going to be an informant, man. Yeah, most of the big-time drug dealers you see, they're informants for the police. They're undercover. Uh, what's that called? They're informants or they're snitches, dude, whatever you want to call it, man. They turn you in. They turn in low-level drug dealers so that they can continue to just perpetuate this fantasy and this fiction. And so then here's the next one, guys. Once you once it's called blood in, blood out, once they jump you in and they, get, they put you in the gang, they protect you in prison even though they're going up in your butthole. What are they protecting you from then? This is what you're going to ask me. Oh, gee, then what are they protecting me from if I still got to pay rent and they still going up in my culo? 
or they're protecting you from his other races doing that as well. Because nobody disrespects a man's culo than another race. At least if it's your homie, he might just put the tip in. He might go soft until you get, you know, your anus stretches out until you get accustomed to it because he cares about you, man. But if it's another race, dude, and you're a loner, man, they just brutally, they just brutally savage, just going savage on you. They don't give a fuck because, man, once you go to the infirmary and you got hemorrhoids and prolapse, dude, they ain't caring. They're going to the next new booty, dude, man. So there's no love there. But here's the problem, and now you, you're involving your family into a life of crime because once you're in the gang, the prison gang, the prison gang goes outside to the street as well. There's some people that make it out. A large majority don't, but there's, there's still a good, there's a good number that make it out. And if you, if you don't believe me, watch this movie called Shot Caller, man. They show how the prison gangs in California run the street. So then even when you get out, they're going to be telling you, hey, have your wife bring drugs into the prison. Because you can't, you know, when you once you get out of prison, dude, I never went back in to visit anybody. One, because I had claustrophobia. And two, I wasn't down with anybody like that. And three, I didn't want to be, I didn't want to go back in once I was out, man. Because they might have figured out they made a mistake and kept me in there, dude. I, once I got out, I was, I ran far away from prison as I could. But here's the whole thing. They're going to have your sister or your mama all your brothers are bringing in drugs, man. And if you don't, they're going to threaten your families with murder and death and extortion, dude. Hey, man, you know, if you don't believe me, then you guys that have been unsubscribing, keep unsubscribing. And don't come back to my channel because I'm going to tell you the cold, hard truth. This is the reality of what it is. Just like the reality of dating in westernized cultures is this, dude. If you're not somebody and you don't have something to offer a woman like some money, or some long ass deformed big Superman pipe, then dudes, they just use and abuse normal guys if you're just a regular dude. That's why I encourage you guys, man, to get your passports and travel, not specifically to become a passport bro and to get a girlfriend, but just to see how different cultures and different races treat you as an individual. And you can break away from your gang homies, man, because you know what, man? How often do you see a gang of dudes traveling to a foreign land, dude? Your gang homies ain't trying to do that, man. You gotta, sometime in this life, you gotta stand alone and do what's best for you. And sometime, man, it's lonely at the top, man. You gotta set out on your own mission, your own path to find who you are and what you represent and what's important to you. So if you like this video, man, thumbs up, man. Leave a comment for the algorithm because no matter what channel you go to, who you listen to, if you stayed this far, man, just give the video a thumbs up, man, you know, because the information is real and raw and it's from the heart. Number two, the comment shows interaction with the content creator. And most importantly, i like you guys to subscribe and hit the notification bell. But like I said, I've noticed my subscriber count has been going down since I've been telling you guys the truth. And so be it. It's, it is what it is, baby. You know, I ain't for everybody and everybody ain't for me. If you're a soft youngster, you want to believe fairy tales and fucking lies and shit and rainbows and kitty cats and fairy dust, then man, don't even come over to this channel because I'm going to be serving you the raw, hard truth, man. So, you know, if you're ready to man up and become a big dog instead of being a little puppy, man, then man, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. But until next time, OG7 back out.